<laughs> Yesterday we removed all 1,000, how many? 1,008 screws from the ceiling. It's a lot of screws. It took our, about five and a half hours. Our shoulders are beat, mm -hmm. um, but today we get to take down the sheet metal and dirty old insulation. So we're gonna pop on full on hazmat suits and uh, mouth protection and eye protection. We don't need ear protection for this. Probably not ear protection, no. yeah. So what we're gonna do with this is we're gonna need some tools. We're gonna need probably a screwdriver because all of these panels, they're all curved and on the edge of the curve, it's sitting right over here on this ledge. Um, there's a little metal ledge that comes out that the panels are resting on on both sides. So we have to pop that out and then one side will come down. One of us will be on one side, one will be on the other, and we'll just guide it down slowly carefully. to the ground, carefully. So some things to consider is there is yellow insulation up in this roof. So we're gonna wear a respiratory protection, so a particulate mask, and then we're also gonna wear the blue suits that Aaron talked about. Yep. So as you can see, we've just taken the first panel out and we've got some tips for taking out the panels because this is the first time we've ever taken the panels out. We needed a crowbar. Crowbar and a screwdriver. Yeah, the screwdriver to pop out the edge because it's sitting on a bit of a lip and then the crowbar to kind of pry it out from the wall. So now one is out right here, the rest you just kind of pry as you go. And see as I pry, it's uh, going over this little lip here. And then once I do the last one, it becomes free. We added hard hats to the safety equipment because we didn't want to get smashed in the head with sheet metal. Good idea. Great. Safety first kids, safety first. Okay, so Brian is currently, uh, he just cut the foam stuff off, the seat belt harness or whatever it is. Um, now we gotta take the bolts off uh, so we can remove this ceiling panel. It's gonna be really fun. All right, so this is a little impact driver that we're using. Um, I found some screws, so hopefully we could take this piece off here um, so that we're able to access the bolts so we could get this ceiling panel off. So uh, for some reason they used a flat head. There you go. <laughs> so we didn't actually have to uh, cut all that. That's nice if we knew about those screws, but we didn't know about those screws till just now. Now we need the impact driver to pull off the, those bolts. Yeah, so these hold in the seat belt for the driver. So when we pull these out, we're probably gonna have to put them back so that we could drive this. So uh, let's just see what it, what it looks like. Of course they would put a rivet in a corner above wires. So <laughs> Brian's all suited up. He's ready. He's got his welding mask on. He's gonna um, take the angle grinder and grind out that pain in the ass rivet in the corner. Get our safety gear on. That is such a crazy spot. I don't like it. Because the problem is, I've got these wires here, and I think one of these is a high pressure air hose that goes to operate this uh, piston right over here that opens and closes the door. So like, I'm over here shitting a brick because if I slip and hit that, it's all over. I think hindsight, what I should have done is maybe put a little piece of metal right here, like grabbed a piece like this or something that we had, 
and put it here just to protect it. Next time, I'm gonna do that, but I just thought of that just now. What do you do? You live, you learn. So the next thing we're gonna do to release this front panel is we're gonna take out, there's one more screw right here. There's a screw here. There's a screw on the front side over here. And then that should release this. Uh, taking this one out should release this top piece along with this uh, one here in the corner. So we want this top piece to come down because this piece is one unit and the metal goes up and angles over the top edge of this by about an inch or so. So we're gonna do that next. And something we've been noticing is we're getting leakage up in that front panel area, which we found out because we put our title up there and the corner of our title got wet. Oops. <laughs> so we gotta, we insulate that and spray foam it. So we gotta get this panel down. And we gotta be really careful about all these crazy wires. So, this is luck. There we go. Just got through the tin there with these tin snips. These are basically metal scissors is what they are. All right, so now we need to bend that piece back. So I'm gonna grab a pair of just long nose pliers um, or needle nose pliers and just bend that back so that we can make a channel for these to slide through going that direction. So when we pull this panel down, we'll pull it from the right edge over here and then pull it off that direction. So we've got plenty of clearance there. That's what he did. He snipped this little part here so we can push the wires back so we can pull this panel off. Make sense? Yeah? Okay. Yeah. And while he does that, I'm going to start unscrewing some of these panels. So let me tell you, the screws in the side panels are so much easier to unscrew than the ones that have paint all over them. So Aaron is over here rocking it, unscrewing all of these screws on the side panel. Um, I finished my side and I'm now assessing um, the bottom edge over here, which has, uh, looks like a utility chase of some kind. I've already peeled off one of the little covers and it looks like it's the coolant hose that goes to the heater and defroster that's in the front of the bus. So. Um, I'm making notes of what pieces go where because I might want to make this same uh, utility chase and use it when the bus is you know, in motion and we're building this out. The reason for that is because the hot water and hot coolant is gonna go through there and these are made out of metal. So they're designed to protect you know, whatever's around it from getting too hot and to contain that heat in the hoses. So we're gonna just keep, make sure that we keep those pieces in the correct order. I'm actually gonna label them with a Sharpie so that we know what piece goes with what edge. That way it fits back together real nice. Nice. What are you going to be doing? I'm going to grind off this this nail or this screw. And why are you doing it? It didn't want to come out when I was using the impact driver. Okay. I think the hole is stripped, so we got to use this thing. I'm using a cutoff wheel versus a grinding wheel because I want to cut the screw off. Very good. All right, first time, let's go. not my favorite job so far. Why is that? I don't know. Ah! I did it. She got it. Look at that. Complete. I didn't really understand. Um, I didn't really understand what I was doing from the beginning. Um, so like my thoughts were that I was supposed to like saw 
the head off, I guess. Mm -hmm. But then Brian explained that it's more like, he did say it's like cutting into the middle, but I didn't really understand that I was cutting the head off from the middle. So it's like breaking the base of the screw off from the top, but attacking it from the center. I didn't really understand that. That makes sense. I was almost done, so it was painfully long doing that way. Okay, so what did we decide for the panels? All right, so we tried two different things. The first thing that we tried is over here, where we were just trying to pry it against, uh, pry it away from the sill here. But after cutting this off here, we noticed that this piece actually wraps around a piece of square tubing that's right behind this sheet metal and goes down the other side on the exterior of the bus. So this might actually be connected to the exterior of the bus. So we kind of uh, messed this one up a little bit to fix this. We're just gonna get the angle grinder and we're gonna cut this one off right here just so that we don't have any sharp edges sticking out. Over here, take two because this is all an experiment, like we've never done this before, so we've got to you know, try new things. So this one, we ended up getting the tin snips. These are electronic tin snips. Whenever you turn it on, it just basically, this blade goes super fast up and down, and we're able to just uh, cut all the way across. We'll show you that here in just a second. So we went just a little bit low so that we can pull the insulation out, throw it out the window so we could dispose of it properly, and then just went a little bit low. So what we're gonna end up doing is taking off these little uh, pieces right here that are riveted on. Um, I just took one off here just by uh, throwing the crowbar on it and popping it off. That was pretty smooth. And we're just going to keep this skirt kind of low here so that uh, we're not fighting with the tool and the foot on the bottom of the tool being a certain certain width and then it starts getting bound up. So if we're just a little bit low, it'll come off a lot smoother. So we're gonna do this all the way down to the end on both sides. Um, but first, before you do that, once you have the screws taken off, it felt like they were either tack welded in place or maybe when they screwed it in, the metal pushed into the holes. And so what I ended up doing was coming over here. I'll show you how this, how this works. Um, just come around the edge like this, throw your crowbar underneath, and then just lightly pop it up like that. And it just comes right up. It pull, and so now that's free right there and then just continue on all the way down and then get to cutting. So while Brian gets these side panels off, I'm working on trying to get this neck nasty, nasty leather squishy pad thing off the back. It is disgusting um, and it's seen way better days. So what I've been doing is taking the pry bar and just like shimmying it along this edge and pulling it up. We could also try exacto knifing it off and maybe taking it off in smaller pieces. So I'm gonna try this for a little bit longer and then if that's just the worst, I'm gonna try the exacto knife. Okay, so another thing that I've been doing is kicking it in with my steel toe boots and then prying up like that. And then when I'm ready to go to a new section, I use the inside of my foot and then I pry it up. And I jiggle it over a little bit more and kind of take it on an angle and kick it in and then pry it up. Cool. Oh yeah, broke it. Okay, so we discovered once we had enough of it pulled back that we're able to just pull this grossness off. So that's what I'm doing, pulling the grossness off. Oh, that's so gross. It smells like teen spirit in here. Ugh. Ew. It touched me. <laughs> oh 
I'm gonna use this little cutting machine here and I'm gonna cut this along the edge to pull up that gross leather. Oh nice, actually, look at it. I don't even need it. I don't even need it, it just pulls it up. You don't need this. I need to cut it, because it's like, probably so old and sun damaged. That oh, just, I see like, what you're saying. Oh, it's right. coming out from the crack. I might need it for like that. Yeah. So, I'll use it maybe over there. Cool. Them some dirty screw holes. Oh my gosh, these screw holes are crazy dirty. Nasty. So we're moving to the floor now and we wanted to kind of like just get our hands dirty just a little bit first before we reported back to you about what we're doing. So you pound the top of the screw head by just a little bit just to loosen up the dirt. And then grab your bit, place it where the square would normally seat, hold on to it, tap that in. So we just tap it in a couple times, then put your drill back onto it and back it out. See how now that now it's backing out? So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab the edge of this strip here and I'm gonna lift that gently. So now that came out. So that's how you do it. Today's a big day, friends. We're doing a really big job that pretty much completes our demolition. Yeah, it does. What are we doing? Today we rip out the floor and then we're also ah! going to remove the rear heater that's connected to the coolant system of the engine. That's right, so we can't take out the floor without removing the old heater and rerouting this cooling system. Coolant? Coolant system. Yeah. So let's go do it. Personal safety gear today ah! for the coolant heater removal operation. What do we need? All right, so we've got our eye protection and nitro gloves. Is that it? Yeah, that's it for right now. All right, we've also <laughs> got set up over here, as you'll see, a drip tray. Um, we wanna caution you that coolant is supposedly really delicious for dogs. Yep. or animals in general. It tastes sweet to them. So if you have pets around, get them out of there. They don't need to be licking up your coolant. I think it would probably kill them um, or be very bad for them. Um, and uh, yeah, if you spill it on the floor and you do have pets, make sure you clean it up really good. And I would just Google how to clean up coolant. Ah, there we go. Now it's loose. Good, oh, there it goes, there it goes. So we're gonna tighten this hose clamp now. There we go. So now that's like that, perfect. So now this one also needs a little help. Grab this barb and throw it in there. And now we're gonna tighten this down. Don't lose it. I'm gonna push this barb in. Now we'll just clean up our mess and we are done here. We just need to disconnect the power to it and take it out of the bus. There's a good chance you're thinking, but wait, Brian and Aaron, what about the heater wiring? How do I take care of that? Let's pass you over to Brian. So this big gray cord runs all the way to the front of the bus and it is the power cord. So we've got four wires coming out of it, white, black, red, and a green. Well, when it was plugged into the heater, all that's coming out of the heater are orange uh, and red. So what I ended up doing was I labeled each one that I cut, as you can see, this is a black. I labeled it black. This one here, it's a red wire. I labeled it red. This one here, also a red wire, but I labeled it white with a piece of tape. So, and then I also left a section of the wire it was connected to as a visual reminder. And then also the same for a green. The green is on an orange, uh, but I labeled it green here. Another tricky one is uh, behind here, I found two black wires coming out of the floor. I have no idea what these two are for, and they're both black. So I labeled one of them black number one, 
and one of them black number two. And so I've got two labels on that one wire because I want both of them to match up. So I'm gonna cut black number one and I'm gonna cut black number two right between there. That way, when I'm looking at these, I'm like, oh, this went to black number two, this went to black number one, and it matches up on this side over here. So now we're completely cut from the bus. When you cut wires, you kind of need to see if the bus is still gonna turn on. So because we have enough wire here, I can rewire these together if it doesn't turn on. So let's go to the front and see if this thing starts. Fingers crossed. <laughs> Fingers crossed, not sure if this is gonna work. So far the pre-start is happening, waiting for the lights to go off. Haha! <laughs> okay, so we traced the wires all the way through the bus to the panel. What'd you find? Found the wire right here. So I had Aaron on the inside pulling the wire back and forth just so I could see the movement back here in the panel that's on the exterior. So something I'm gonna do next is figure out where are these connected one by one. Oh my God. Yeah. And we don't want to be too rough in here because we don't want to in uh, inadvertently unplug something that we need. Executive decision is in. We are going to cut this wire here because when we followed it up, it's going directly to the switch on the interior that's, uh, that's labeled the heater. So if we cut it right here like this, <laughs> that's a lot harder to cut than I thought. <laughs> Come on, muscle. Muscle, muscle, man. Oh, he sounds like a little bit of cut happening. There we go. Now we can at least pull it through the bus. Yeah, so I'm gonna I'm gonna cut this out right here just a little bit, and we're gonna label this. Um, and I'm gonna use electrical tape to um, to cap off these wires here. And we're gonna label this rear heater. And Heat. And just leave it connected to the switch for right now. Uh, because we don't want these bare ends to touch anything. So we're just gonna get some electrical tape, wrap them around each one individually. Why don't we want the wire tips to touch anything else in there? Because we don't wanna start an electrical fire and neither do you, so be responsible. And then pull this wire here into the bus on the inside oh. where we've got the roll of wires. And this job we're going to call Operation Floor Demolition. Let's do this. Something that will always work to your benefit is switching hands while you work. So if you're dominant with your right hand, swap over your left and make it the dominant hand. It is going to save your back and help save your energy. Oh, all right. So those two black, black number one and black number two that we had no idea was, it's a ground. They were both ground wires. They were, uh, they were just connected to a screw to the floor. So now we know that those are ground wires, so they're not needed. Bye bye. Nice little observation for our homies out there building school buses. Yeah, friends, we've got some awesome news. <laughs> we totally lucked out. This floor is sexy. There's no rust. It's immaculate. Like, uh, I really think that Arizona just mummified this and like prevented rust from happening. <laughs> it was so worth the trip down to Arizona. Yeah. Like when we were looking at school buses in Ontario, we just felt so defeated and that like, we would just be spending all of our time fixing rust. And to those people out there who do deal with rust we and feel for you. clean it up and yeah. make it beautiful, you guys are amazing. Yeah. You guys it are the was real really heroes. Worth it to go, yeah, you're the real heroes. It was so worth it to go to Phoenix though, to AAA bus. Those guys really have good buses. Yeah, and this isn't even sponsored. Like, we just truly like those guys. They helped us out so much uh, in the whole buying process and explaining how everything works. And even pointed us to insurance that would approve us even before it was completely converted. Yep. So that was cool. <laughs> oh, this is so good. Okay, we're gonna finish the floor. We'll show you what it looks like when we're done. Now we gotta focus. Yeah. 
Yeah, good job. That's pretty much it for yeah. deconstructing the bus. Yeah, that's, that puts a wrap on this one. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're going to shop vac this whole area, sweep it out um, so that we could then do a degreaser on the inside and prep all the, the holes in the floor. There's a million holes in the floor from uh, connection points for the plywood to the yeah. floor along with all the holes that the seat bolts went through. Yeah. So we'll see what we're gonna do with that. So you're gonna wanna stay tuned and uh, Keep watching for sure. Yeah, we've got some exciting stuff coming up with the roof. Um, we're going to go, like I mentioned, weigh the bus um, empty. So that should be yeah. pretty interesting to see how much it weighs and then we can see our allowance. We're obviously not gonna fill it to the gills, but um, it's nice, for, especially for you guys, for us to know how much it weighs empty so we can kind of see with balance and all that once we start putting components in. Um, one more thing, before we move the bus, we're gonna roll a magnet on the ground to make sure we don't puncture any of our brand new tires. Yeah, because there was a lot of nails and screws in this plywood, uh, and we've been throwing it all out the back window. Now, we haven't been throwing the nails specifically out, but there's been a lot of nails connected to it, and so any loose ones might have gotten jostled free, so yeah. we just wanna be sure that uh, we're mindful of all the metal that's been uh, thrown out the window. Yeah, our tires are in really good condition, yeah. and tires are expensive, so you don't wanna replace them. Because yeah, they're like 400 silly. a pop. Yeah. 400 US a pop. <laughs> yeah, don't mess that up with goofball error. Yeah. Um, get yourself one of those like wheelie magnets. Please. But yeah, if you want the in-depth version of how we are doing this, um, check out the description for Get Your Schoolie On. We are going to be doing step-by-step -step tutorials. Yeah, that go more in-depth than the fun stuff we just show here. Darn tootin'. So if you haven't yet, go ahead and click subscribe, hit that bell to follow this schooly adventure and uh, to follow Be Adventure Partners. We appreciate you hitting that thumbs up button, hitting like, uh, and leaving a comment. Let us know your questions that you have about this phase in the process or anything schooly yeah. or online business related. We're more than happy to open up and share with you what we know. We love having you here and until next time, friends. Adventure on. Adventure on. Bye. Bye. <laughs> it almost, he always does that to me. This time it almost went out the back window. I actually had to catch it this time. What a freak show. <laughs> All right, we got to get this thing cleaned up. Let's do this. All right, so as you can see, you alright? Oh, we zoomed. This is nasty. Nasty, nasty. One benefit of being the camera gal, I didn't get my hands dirty, not even one bit. <laughs>